Well, it's a wee bit nippy in here this morning, but we've got a job to do. I'm gonna to have to pull the head off of this four liter Jeep engine and figure out why our temporary head gasket and a can fix didn't take. So for you guys that missed the original video, the one that led up to this, I'll give you a quick recap. Um, bought this Jeep sight unseen off of Facebook Marketplace for 1500 bucks. And I was like, at that price, I don't really care what's wrong with it, we'll just fix it. So they delivered it to my house, it ran, it drove. I was like, wow, this is good, this is a win. But after just a very short period of time, I realized that no, it had some serious cooling system issues. It would occasionally overheat. It was mud. There was no antifreeze in it. It was just rusty mud, muck. The previous owner had just, I, I don't know how long this problem persisted, but they just kept pouring bottle after bottle after bottle of sealer into this thing. So it became obvious that if I'm gonna keep this, and I do wanna keep it, I'm gonna to have to go through the entire cooling system, flush the block out and, and just go through everything. Because like I said, it's just caked with mud. So this was in the fall that it really started to get bad and it was obviously a head gasket issue by this point. So it, it, it would run for just a short period of time before it would start pushing coolant out of the radiator, it, would, it was putting water out the exhaust, it would get the occasional misfire, all of the telltale obvious signs of a head gasket issue. So I says, well, let's try some miracle head gasket in the can. Now, I know, I know, you can't fix this. You can't fix the problem with something like Blue Devil, but you can buy yourself a little time, and I've done that in the past. I was hoping it would work on this. Yeah, get me through the winter so I could, I could go through everything in the spring. Well, about three days after we shot that video, the problem came back. Started misfiring again, started putting water out the exhaust. It had failed. So I said in that video, if it doesn't hold, we'll pull it apart and we'll autopsy this thing and see exactly why it didn't work. Plus, I'd like to see the actual path that it takes. Um, so, these head gasket sealers, uh, all of them, as the active ingredient in them, uh, they use something called sodium silicate. So, sodium silicate, what it does is it finds temperature differentials and solidifies. So, it goes in as a liquid, and then when it finds a drastic difference in temperature, like between the combustion chamber and the cooling system, where you, typically you'd have a break in the head gasket, it solidifies. And over a relatively short period of time, a few minutes, to an hour or two, enough of it will gather in that passage to plug it. Some people have had really good luck with it. It were a repair will last for years. And I, I mean, I, I never fooled myself into thinking, oh, yeah, this will fix the problem. Again, I was just trying to bide some time. I didn't get as much time out of it as I wanted to. So that's what we're going to do now. We're going to pull the head off of this thing, and we're going to find what the original break was. But more importantly, I'm curious to find out where or why the sodium silicate, where it gathered and why it failed. So. Let's pull this thing apart and uh, see what happens. So before we actually go inside the engine, there's a color code that we can follow once we get in there. So if you look at this, so all this brown muck is from overheating before the sodium silicate. And then you see this white that looks kind of like road salt. Well, that's overheating after the sodium silicate. And we can see here on the engine, look how much white there is here. Look at the water pump. It was pissing water out of the water pump also. So we know that once we get in there, we can follow the white and know what the Blue Devil actually got to and plugged and what it wasn't able to do. Well, we're almost ready to pull this thing off. But before I go any further with it, I wanted to go back to the first video because several viewers pointed out that these 2000, 2001 4.0s are prone to cylinder head cracking. And that they thought that might be it. But on these heads where they crack is on the top surface, like under the rockers. It would have put water in the oil, not in the combustion chambers. So you can see we have, oh God, this is filthy. 
<laughs> a lot of hard miles. Um, but yeah, you can see there's no traces of water actually in the oil. The crack, let me put this back in there. The crack would have happened right here, right in this zone. But again, that's not the issue we have here. That would put water in the oil, it would make a mess of things, but it wouldn't give us a misfire and water out the exhaust. Uh, another couple of minutes and we'll have this thing apart. Okay, I just came across something that makes me seriously wonder about the internal condition of this engine. What it might have been through. This is a little crazy. So, when I bought this thing last year, you could see that it had just had a fresh water pump, fresh thermostat. Somebody had tried to get a, on top of the cooling system problem with this thing. So, didn't think anything of it. And then I noticed over the last couple of weeks that I've been driving it, with the head gasket leaking again, that the water pump was leaking. All right, no big deal. I know I've got to go into it anyway. Well, look what I just found here. Now, you can see this water pump does not match the patina of the rest of the engine. Okay, this was a fresh water pump. What's this? It's actually rotted through. Something extremely corrosive got in here. Look at this. One of the veins is completely rusted away. Okay, like, I don't ever recall coming across something like this. I mean, I've, of course, I've found impellers that had issues. I've had impellers that actually just came off. But I've never seen one that's only a year or so, let's call it two years old, that's rotted through and, and with, with one, of the, one of the veins actually missing from it. I, this is a mystery. If you guys have any ideas, if you've come across this before, at least it's not on an ancient water pump. I'm not talking about something that's been sitting in a field for 75 years. I'm talking about something that's only been in service for like max two years. It's got a vein completely rusted off of it. All right, like what happened inside this engine? keep digging. Well, we found our answer. And in Blue Devil's defense, there is no way it could have even hoped to cope with the situations that were going on inside this engine. I have two mysteries now. The first mystery is, what the hell happened to that water pump? And the second mystery is, I don't know how this thing ran as well as it did. Because the head is is warped. It's like, it's like a banana. The thing is shaped like a banana. So, It looks like we had a little water intrusion at the front cylinder right here, but mm, I see all of it back here. So it's better look at the cylinder head. So this is the front of the head, and this is the back of the head. And these two back cylinders are showing traces of that blue devil, that white. All right, so up front, I'm not seeing really anything except for the, the, clean, the clean part of the piston where the carbon was cleaned off. But back here is where we definitely had water intrusion. But that's not where the misfire came from. Because look at this. So here's the gasket. Now Jeep went to the MLS gasket in the year 2000. Before that it was composite. But in 2000 they went to this style of gasket. So look what I'm seeing over here. So these are the two cylinders that were sharing, that were uh, getting water into the cylinders. So this was our water leak into the engine. But over here, we have a head gasket leak or a, a fire ring leak between these two cylinders. And the important thing to know about this is that it never misfired until it got hot, like over around 220 degrees. Normally, when not overheating, it would run in the 190, 200 range like that. Once I got off of like 210, kind of into the 220 range, it would start to misfire. Now, I had just chalked it up to it's water getting into one of the cylinders. But no, it's actually these two cylinders sharing fire and these two cylinders sucking water. 
But in Blue Devil's defense, there is nothing it could have done to even temporarily seal this up. The head is all over the place. The gasket isn't showing where the water came through. It's not showing any stains like that. But I do believe that it, it actually was seeping between, I'm gonna cut my fingers on this. I believe it was seeping between the layers of the MLS. So it wasn't the surface of the head or the surface of the deck that was letting water in. It was, it was happening here, someplace in between. But regardless, it doesn't make any difference. So this is, this is gonna have to go out and get surfaced. I'm not gonna replace the, uh, the gasket with an MLS. I'm gonna go with a composite gasket because even if this surface is, is true now, I'm sure there's gonna be a little bit off with the deck and I'm not pulling the motor out to go any further than what I'm doing right now. So a composite gasket will, will do a little bit better job of sealing up a deck that might be out by a thousandth or two. I'll clean this really good just to make sure. But generally speaking, it's never really in the deck. It's, you're gonna find your problem in the head. So to answer your questions, no, I didn't find any head bolts that were specifically loose or tight. They all broke with the same amount of effort. They all unscrewed the same way. So it's just, I don't know what came first, the chicken or the egg. Did this thing have a severe overheating problem and it led to the, to the cylinder head warping? Or did the cylinder head warp and it led to a severe overheating problem and then the previous owner just dumping buckets of sealer in? It's not looking as bad as I thought it would, but then again, I've more or less flushed this thing, I don't know, like five or six times. Run it completely dry, refilled it. This is the second radiator that's been in it, and I'm gonna put another one in. So there's, it's, it's less, there's less gack in there than I was expecting. But either way, in Blue Devil's defense, no, it could not have done anything to help this situation. If it was a typical leak between a water jacket and a cylinder, yeah, it, would, it wouldn't be a permanent fix, but it would last long enough to get you by, which is what we were looking for when we poured it in there. So there is the follow-up to the Blue Devil video that we did before. I hope you got something out of that. And now I got a lot of cleaning and I got to get this head over to the machine shop. So I'll see you tomorrow.